What's going on, my friends? It is the Beard here, but today we are back once again in the Hunter Call of the Wild. That's right, my friends. We are here today for our next iteration in the Call of the Wild series. We have a lot of new members within our community that have just picked up the game, and I thought I would offer a few more tips and tricks. So I'll be going over a few tips and tricks to get you started and to get you moving. Now, some of these I employ, some of them I do not, and I'll explain that as we go. We're just going to jump right to this, and I wanted to show you the first off what we're doing right now. As you can see, I am over in Renachi. I've just left this outpost on a quad. I've headed down. And I'm slowly meandering down the trail, making a lot of noise. Now, let me throw a disclaimer out there. First off, this is not something I like to employ very often, but it is all over the internet and everyone knows about it. And I don't think it's fair that you do not have the tools at your disposal in hand. So I thought I would throw this one in here. We're going to quickly cover it and move on. Uh, if you want to make use of it, it is completely your choice. I believe it has its uses. I often use it to clear hunting pressure off my map which is the, if you are new, it's the little purple circles that show up after you've killed something. It's a very handy way of clearing that if there's an area that you want to hunt an awful lot. Uh, another good thing when you're first starting out is this method, which we will refer to as the slaughter glitch, uh, is a way for new players to get a lot of game in one place, to earn some money and some XP, some well-needed money and XP. Now, all you simply do is get your quad, providing you have a quad. I've never tested this method running on foot. Uh, and in fact, I haven't done it in a while, and I have heard that it has been nerfed a little bit, but it, it still does work, from what I'm told. And we're about to find that out together. And all you do is head down the path, head to the railroad down here, the Beaumont Railroad. Cruise along to the west, as you can see I am currently doing. Uh, and it's a good idea to zig and zag a little. Set your time to about between 7 and 9 in the morning. You can see we're right by, uh, is that the church there? It is the church. Also a very good hot spot, I might say. But that'll be something we'll cover in a later video. Just cruise around down here. Weave a little bit because you want to scare as many of the animals as you possibly can in this direction. And we'll show you why when we get there. That really is a great spot down there, guys. Uh, I, as I said, I will do a video on it. But down at the church, ooh, lots of rares have come out of there. And from what I hear, a couple diamonds. So let's get to this. Now, we're just going to pedal down. Uh, I haven't taken the time I normally would. Normally, I would zig downward like so. Kind of taking your time to make sure that you're you're getting the reach. Your sound does travel a couple hundred meters when you're on these things. Uh, and then I would zag and come back up. Ooh, zag. See what I did there? Zaggy DK. It's like a Zaggy DK reference. Zag. Uh, and I would come all the way back up. And then I would hop the tracks. Be careful hopping the tracks. <laughs> You'll know what I'm talking about once you've done it a few times. And then I would zag all around up here. Moving back to the tracks, never losing my forward momentum because if you do, you're going to lose the game. They can get out of the area we're going, and we will talk about that as well. Now, I'm going to get back on the tracks, and just for the sake of the video, I'm going to just scooch right down there. So, bear with me a moment. Okay, my friends, so we are here. Now, again, it's all about making the noise down here. You can see in the bottom right corner on the quad, uh, it's a whole lot of red jump off the quad and everything it turns out well okay here's the next step my friends now i'm going to use my binos with the rangefinder here as you can see it's a good 282 down there so we don't want to get too close and 150 meters is your sweet spot now i understand when you're first starting out the game you're not going to have a rangefinder i get it so what we'll do is we're going to give you a visual marker here you can see as I move forward, look at the game down there. Now, I have seen a whole lot more than that before. But you'll notice there's a bit of an opening that comes up here. And as it presents itself, you'll see we're moving ever so much closer. We're at 200. You want to be at the 150 mark. So we'll just run ahead here. And you will get to know roughly where it is you can be now. So you want to zero in at about 150. You may not have your zeroing perk. Don't panic. Uh, they're not going to get out if you don't go too close. Okay, so here's the opening I was referring to. If you treat this opening as your go-to spot, 
just before it. Now, I often sit right back here. The game will not run out. Okay, so we're 165 out. That's pretty good. Now, you go ahead, get your best gun out, and I recommend using the 270. Uh, you'll get integrity if you make good shots, but it's not all about making a good shot here. It's simply about hitting them and killing them, lining them up, and keeping them spooked by shooting. Don't be afraid about the integrity. We're not trying for diamonds right now. We're just wanting to clear the herd. And this is it, my friends. Rinse and repeat. Sit here and shoot. And it'll help you practice on running targets as well, for that matter. Oh, and you can certainly miss like I do. Uh, there's one down already. And there we go. We'll just keep plugging into them. Watch the bears. Sometimes they will charge. And uh, just shoot at will. That's about it, my friends. Okay. Now, once you've cleared the field of all the animals, go ahead and advance. But just be aware, you know, you may not have shot everything. I highly recommend going in with a bit of a boomstick at the ready. Take off your scope and just be prepared because you do get trampled quite easily in this game. So now just go ahead and pick up all your harvests. There's going to be many laying around in most cases. Watch your XP and your money grow. Okay, this took a little while to explain. The rest are a whole lot faster. Let's get to it. Tip number two. Now, you are going to start off with this gun right here, the 243. I recommend getting into the Hyperion Scope as soon as you can, but you will not start with that. But the Starter Scope isn't bad, and it will definitely get you on your way. This is a fantastic gun. Don't let the caliber size fool you. You will use this gun a whole lot in the game, as it's ethical for just about everything across the board, uh, with the exception of uh, foxes and... Uh, um, must ears and the words I'm looking for that just aren't getting in my mouth. So be good to your gun and it will be good to you. And what I mean by that is do not take on game that is much too large for the size of caliber weapon you are using. Okay, so that's a quick tip. Uh, I can't stress enough that most people just want to go out and shoot everything. That makes for hours and hours of tracking. Not very good. Okay, so tip number three. Now, you're not going to start off with a rangefinder, so you need to start getting the idea on, on how to spot animals, how far away it roughly is. Now, as you can see, I just started here over by close to Beaumont Railroad, and we were at Ronachi Outpost down in the water. I've walked out to the east, okay? And so you can see I'm right by this lake. So when you cross this copse of trees, you can see just roughly from tree to tree here, we're roughly about 60 meters. So look at the space between. That gives you a bit of an idea. Knowing how far you need to shoot and how you need to raise your weapon to aim it will have a very large play in early game. Now, as you progress, the first perk you're going to want to unlock, and we'll go down here to perks, and we will take a look for it, is this guy right here. It is under rifles. It is called zeroing. Get to your zeroing perk as fast as possible. You'll have to dump one into muscle memory. And then you've got two other choices to get through. I highly recommend breath control right off the bat. It helps an awful lot as it decreases that wobble when you're holding your breath. You can see all the descriptions down below. I won't take your time reading them. Get that zeroing perk. Get it unlocked all the way. Now, if you will look in the bottom right corner, you'll see I'm now toggling between my zeroings. 75. 300 and 150 so that means that when I look down this scope I know that if I'm aiming at these trees right over here that we just looked at that was uh, that was about 60 meters if I shoot at 150 it's gonna go high if I shoot at 75 I know where I need to keep it I'm a whole lot closer to the 60 mark okay and then of course if you're shooting at 300 uh, it's gonna go way high if I'm aiming here it's gonna shoot up here that's the way the zeroing works. Tip number, what are we on, three? <laughs> Tip number four, need zones. Unlock these need zones. As you can see, a coyote has been resting here from 7 till 11 in the morning. Who can open like 7-11? That means that you now have on your map inside information. You can see all of these need zones that I have unlocked. This tells me that the moose will come here to drink between 9 and 13.30. The black bear will come here 
uh, to it's a need zone at 7:30 to 11. So this is drinking and eating and or resting. Very crucial to how you set up your hunt. You can adjust your time of day and head out into areas accordingly with the correct loadouts for those animals. It really, really helps a lot. Tip number five, your sound. Bottom right corner, you can see right now as I'm walking, I've got three full white bars of sound. If I were to run, watch the sound bar. We get that notch of red. That means you are making a lot of noise and the animals spook very easily in this game, mainly from noise, also from scent. So be very careful on how you move around. Obviously crouching and going prone are by far and large the quietest methods of movement, but who's going to crawl around the map? You're not going to do it. And this even itself is quite slow. Now, if I do hit the uh, speed button, as you can see now, it is making a little bit less noise, but up and walking, it makes a full three bars. So please keep that in mind when moving around. A lot of that's going to be your own trial and error, and you will see it sooner rather than later that when you're quiet, you will see more game. Tip number six, cover. As you can see right now, my friends, I am fully visible. If you direct your attention once again down to the bottom right corner next to the sound bar and next to the heart rate, you will see a very identifiable circle. Now, if I'm standing right now, everything can see me from a good 100 meters plus away. It's terrible. They know I'm here. I'm not going to get to shoot anything unless it's well outside of your, your range of hearing and vision for the animals, which is around the 200 plus to 250 meter marker. At that stage, they got no clue what you're doing and you're golden. Go ahead and have a party. But for all intents and purposes, when you were hunting, you do not want to be seen just the same as you don't want to be heard. Now going to a crouch, as you can see, I now have a line with a half circle behind it. That tells me that I am visible within 25 meters directly ahead of me. So that's okay. That's not bad. But let's say you want to level something that you need close range, like a bow. If you want to use the bow, you're going to want to get them inside of 30 meters. Personally, I like to have them inside of 20 meters as I know my shot will be accurate and not as effective by wind. So how do we increase the odds on this? Well, you can go prone. And as you can see, it is now a line. The animals can almost walk right on top of you and will not notice you until I don't have an exact figure on this, but it seems to be within about a dozen meters or so. At about the 10 meter mark, they will see you and off they go. Now there's more that you can do, and I employ this method quite often. For those of you that have joined me in the live streams, you've seen me do it on just about every opportunity I get. Using cover. Use the trees. Now watch. We'll do this as we're standing up. I'm fully visible. I'm going to walk into this tree. Now it's as if I'm crouching, but what happens if I crouch? Now it's as if I'm laying down prone. What happens if I go down prone? Well, as you can see, I'm down prone and there wasn't much difference there. Different trees will give you different cover. Um, and not to mention getting right up and in close to them. You can see huh, that, well, there we go. A friend of mine is actually playing PUBG. I should have closed that, but it's hard because, you know, it's steam. It's a thing. And uh, now you can see the line is that much smaller. They could come right up and I could smack them on the rump. It really works that well, my friends. Make use of the surroundings. You will also notice, as I'm in good cover right now, I can move out to get these branches out of my way because they are very annoying. Now, I'm only in a crouch and I've got cover like I'm prone and I could go right to the very edge. Makes you very sneaky, 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 sneaky indeed. Tip number seven, always keep the wind on your face whenever possible. Wind is a major player in this game as animals not only hear you and spook, but they will smell you and spook. And when they smell you, they're gone. Then often they get alarmed, they become alert, alarmed, and they flee. So keep that wind on your face at all times if possible. Now there are measures in which you can use that will help you in your journeys and will help you with your scent. You can use Scent Eliminator. It's in the store under Equipment. Scent eliminator, eliminator, it is a good tool to use. It doesn't work all the time. It seems to be on a rather RNG scale. It's a bit of chance. So don't rely on it, 
but certainly make use of it. And now you might not use that early game because you're worried about funds. The other thing you can do is actually buy particular scents as you unlock them. Certain animals in the game, most of them in fact, do have scents you can buy, like the elk, the moose, the whitetail, etc. You get the picture. Make use of those. But again, this is more towards, I would say, towards end game, as you no longer worry about money once you've unlocked everything. And then what else are you going to spend it on? I mean, you can't go on a vacation with it. You can't do anything fantastic. It's not like you can go and buy me a drink. But this is my point. Early game, I, you, you pretty much just have to watch the wind. Tip number eight, gun progression. Guys, in the early game, don't be too picky about what you shoot. I highly recommend, uh, as Mr. Rec Kiwi, one of my upstanding moderators and community members, has often said, if it moves, it dies. Shoot everything you come across. It will help you level and help you get your all-precious gun score, which will help you unlock things as you go, much like your weapons and your, or your ammo, I should say, and your scopes. Um, and, and it will help you level and it will put money in your pocket. Now that's not to say that that's always the best method. I myself, I'm a patient hunter. I like to call an area in before I start shooting it up in case there's some big monster hiding over there in the background. And that's pretty much how I like to do that. Tip number nine. This may very well be one of the most important tips that I can give you during this video, my friends. Use your callers. As you can see, I just started chirping away with this here, a deer bleat, which you do start with, one of my favorite in-games. The other favorite in-game would be the deer grind. Now, you will not get this one till end-game. This will directly call to all of the bucks in the area. It does also bring in the does. But this is one you start with, and it will call all of them in, as you can see. <laughs> Give it some time and be patient. Wait to see if the bucks come out of the bush if you're looking for something a little bigger. But as I mentioned in my previous tip, early game, just start shooting. Does and cows in this game are lemmings. They will follow those callers like there's no tomorrow. You may shoot one and kill it and apply hunting pressure, and they will simply come right back in. It's just what they do. They don't know any better take advantage of it. It is extremely, extremely useful. Tip number 10. Unlock as many outposts, monuments, and points of interest as possible. Make sure you go around and check them all out. Now you'll see I have some that I've left. I'm not interested in doing all of them. You're gonna find your hunter blinds. That's what this symbol means. You'll have Undiscovered locations that may be points of interest. They may be something like a monument. Monuments give you XP, like this one right here. Northern Mining Structures. That is a monument you unlock. As well as the outposts. You do get a certain measure of XP, as well as when you click on the, uh, the lookout points, you will unlock the entire area. It's very crucial on how you can discover your map and learning where it is you want to go. You have to plan your hunts. I mean, you can just set out and start walking north or south or east or west, whatever you want to do. However, knowing where your need zones are, as we talked about over here, and knowing what times they're going to be there and planning your hunt accordingly will make your hunt that much more successful. And inevit inevitably, <laughs> it'll help you speak. Inevitably, it will help you progress quicker within the game. Bonus tip. This is our last and final tip for the video today. Now, my friends, I cannot implore to you enough the importance of this, and it's something that I did not do and found out later on, and I wish I had have known about, missions. You've probably seen your missions by now, and you've probably gotten a little frustrated with a couple of them. Persevere. Those missions is one of the fastest ways to gain XP, as well as unlock new areas, discover new areas, and progress your storyline. There is missions on every one of the maps, on Leighton, on Hirschfelden, and Medved. At the end of the story missions, you will have a chance at a diamond. I personally have not finished my missions as I wanted to earn my diamond 
in game by dropping an animal first. Personal preference. Now, Smartery mentions one of them is right here calls. You'll see animals will put out calls much like this Roosevelt elk did. It is a male. And if you want to go and track it down, all you have to do is look at where the hash marks are, the little uh, ping, if you will, and select it and it'll tell you the animal. It will tell you the sex of the animal, if it's male or female, and the general proximity of where it is. Now, there are perks and skills later on that will help affect this, but for early game, it is certainly a bonus to have. You may use this to track them down. Pay attention to your tracks. Using your hunter mate is a fantastic tool. I thought I pulled my hunter mate out is a fantastic tool when tracking animals. Again, there are certain perks that you can add that will make it easier to track these animals, especially with your hunter mate. And you can explore those later on down the line. We will do another video very similar to this. And there are certain things that I have not included and I haven't purposely left them out, but I wanted to touch base on the top 10 of my most useful tips and tricks that I offer up when someone is first starting and says to me, hey, Beard, what do I do? Uh, how do I get going? I hope you've enjoyed it, my friends. Thank you for joining me here today. If you did find any of this information useful, please do me a favor, hit the like, hit the subscribe, share it with your friends. And when you subscribe, hit that little bell beside it. Do it with two hands if you gotta. And that way we can hang out again. Lastly, we have a fantastic gaming community. We have some incredible hunters. We have weekly events, giveaways, and a king of the kill competition that gives you a chance to strut your stuff. So hit that Discord link down below. Come and check me out, my friends. We'll chat to you soon. Until then, I'm The Beard, and we'll catch you next time.